Got a new chair, didn't I? Nice new leather chair for sitting at the computer. Strictly it's not new, it's actually my brother's, so it's very much second hand. But seeing as we're all property investors here, I think it's safe to say that we all know that we are a bunch of tight asses because we're always saving up for the next house. Anyway, I think we're on week six or week seven now of isolation. I don't, genuinely don't know anymore, but that doesn't matter. I'm utilizing this extra time to review all of my, you know, review my businesses and put out more content. I've actually potentially created and gonna launch a new business. I've been working on the logo, the website and the business plan for that. So I'll be able to bring that to you in future weeks and months and uh, take you along a new series of that. I've also put my time into uh, doing a bit of DIY, which I will take you through now. I wanted to come on here and just discuss uh, a topic that keeps coming up quite a lot at the moment to me and that is if you're a brand new property investor and you've got £20,000 or £15,000 or thirty, for that fact, if you're a brand new property investor and you don't know whether to buy your first home for yourself and your partner maybe to live in versus you know you buying your first investment, you know you're very ambitious, you want to build a property portfolio you're happy to stay living in a rented accommodation or with your parents or so on, but you don't know what the right balance is. Should you buy a house? Should you buy your first investment property? So in this video, I want to cover that, um, but I think there's a lot of misconceptions over that. Oh, fuck it up. What was I gonna say in the first place? Uh, I've lost the plot. Whilst on the topic of losing the plot, for anyone out there that is struggling mentally, I can highly recommend going out for a walk at lunchtime. So you have a, a strong start to the day, quite focused, and then I do find that tends to peter off. So if you can, at halfway at lunchtime, if you can go, right, I'm going to go out for an hour or 45 minutes, I'm going to get in five, 6,000 steps, then going to come back, you'll feel completely revitalised, a new set of energy, at least that's me anyway. And for anyone that likes to, to learn on the go, I can highly recommend uh, a book that I was recommended. It's about how to improve your overall wealth going forward. You know, it looks at stocks, shares, pensions, SIPs, ISAs, the lot. Then I would highly recommend that you read or listen to How to Own the World on Audible. Uh, it's been a really enjoyable thing to listen to. I've, I've enjoyed listening to it on Audible. I would recommend listening to it because it's quite a technical book and I can imagine it'd be quite intense to read it. And um, that has completely opened my eyes up to what I might need to save in order to become wealthy in the future. To give you an example, you know, if you want to have a, if you want to retire on £27,000 a year, which is probably the UK's average salary, I would say. So if you want to retire on £27,000 per annum, you're going to need £500,000 in your pension savings, which is quite a lot of money. So it's really about setting your, your goals high and then telling you about how you can get there. And it's not as difficult as you think if you start now. You know, if you're in your 20s and your 30s, you really have a head start by trying to open certain ISAs and funds and investing in certain stocks and shares. So stocks and shares. So I would really recommend it. There's a good way in which you can um, utilize your money and compound the interest between now and when you're 60, for example, to really make it possible for you to build wealth. And the other purpose of the book is to really diversify your portfolio.
So now for the final segment of this video where, as mentioned, I wanted just to cover as a new investor whether you should be looking to buy your own home first or buy a buy to let first. Now if you were to go online and put that into YouTube, undoubtedly all of the educational courses out there will tell you 100% you need to be buying a buy to let. You need to be buying something that brings in cash, you need to be buying something where you're going to earn out of it rather than it be a liability. And to an extent, if you look at it in really simple terms, yes, I would agree. However, in this scenario, I'm going to be the devil's advocate and actually say that you as a young investor might have a partner and whilst you are happy renting or living with a family member, it's quite possible that you want to own your first home. You want to buy a home and you want to grow a million pounds property portfolio and I admire your ambition. You should be able to do both and I'm going to show you a way in which you might be able to make your money work for you. Now this concept yeah, does involve you potentially buying a house for yourselves and it's going to have to be need refurbishment. You're going to need some way in order to add value to it. However, if it gives you the best of both worlds, then this is potentially one of the best strategies that you could use as a first time investor. Now the figures I'm about to give you, of course I'm about to get out the whiteboard. The figures I'm about to give you are based on properties potentially in the Midlands or up north as that's where the majority of my questions are coming from. However, if you live in London or you live down south, you're gonna need to work your ass off a bit harder because you need a much bigger deposit in order to purchase but it's still perfectly achievable as I live down south. I live down south, always have done, always intend to, and yes, you need a bigger deposit in order to buy, but you shouldn't let that deter you. We're considered the snowflake generation, and that is because people are wasting their money on high rental, so they might be spending 600 pound, 700 pound on a room, they're paying for Ubers, they're paying for nights out, they're paying for Starbucks every day, and they just, they don't have the minerals to save. They can't cut anything out of their lifestyle. That's gonna change. If you want to make a future for yourself, you need to change that. And um, I, I believe it's perfectly achievable. You know, we need to stop blaming the government for the fact we can't afford things and take a bit of accountability for ourselves. Sorry if that calls any of you out. If you feel that I personally targeted you, that probably means you need to save more money. So I hope you take this as motivation to do so. With that being said, as mentioned, this is very much based on property figures that are in the Midlands and in the North. How about that? Is that better? There we go, there we go. So as you can see, a lot of the people that come to me and ask me might have you know, 20, 25,000 pound deposit. So my suggestion in this scenario, and there's lots of other scenarios, I just want to caveat the fact that this is just one of many examples. This is me trying to offer a bit of guidance you might have £25,000 and instead of taking that straight away and putting that into a buy to let, you might look to buy your own home. So in this scenario, we're gonna need for you to be able to create value quickly using your own home. So you might, for example, look for a property that is listed at £125,000. So £125,000 is the list price, it's the asking price that it's on with the agent for. The main misconception with first time buyers is that you need to go in and pay close to the asking price, that's wrong. The list price is £125,000. You need to view lots, you need to find one where you can add value, and then you need to offer low. So the goal in this example is to find something that's on for say £125,000 and agree it at £100,000. For you, because you're a first time buyer, you need to put in 10% 10, 10 deposit, and then there'll be some fees. So in this scenario, that's £12,500. After that, you're then going to be looking at uh, refurb costs of say twelve and a half thousand pounds. Of course, that could come in more, but I think for this first one, you need to be as conservative as possible. You need to try and save as much as possible and do this on a shoestring budget yourself. So twelve and a half thousand pound refurb, and then you're going to have hope to have uplifted the value. And um, you know, you might decide to live there for a year or two before doing anything, and hope that you know the market goes up. And in which case, you know, revalue at £150,000. You know, you've added some, added some value, the market might have moved well with you, and then you might look to refinance at £150,000. So what you're then gonna look to do 
as a benefit of being the homeowner means that you can leave less deposit in. In this example, we would look to refinance and pull out as much money out of that property as possible. You're in a really advantage ad advantageous, you're in a really great position here, so you need to try, in my opinion, pull out as much as possible without over -le leveraging. But as this is your first house, try and pull out and leave 10% 10, 10 me. <clears throat> Try and pull out as much money as possible and leaving 10% in. In this example, that's 15,000 pounds, meaning that you have 10% equity left in the property. Depending how much you've spent, how much you've decided to pull out, you then take the money that you've pulled out and refinanced out of your own home to then buy a buy-to-let. So again, here, the buy-to-let, you might have 25 to 35,000 pounds in order to spend on a buy-to-let. You're then gonna go a little bit lower in the market because it's not for yourself, this is for a buy to let, this is for income, you know. You're gonna look for something that's maybe on for the 80,000 pound mark. Good areas to do this in are, you know, northern areas such as Newcastle, Leeds, Liverpool, uh, even part, other parts, you know, South Wales, there are some really fantastic areas for finding properties that are, you know, two bed houses that are listed for 70 or 80,000 pounds. So you're going to find a house for £80,000, do the same again, you're going to do a lot of viewings, a lot of research, you're going to make a lot of offers and you know, because putting £60,000 offer in on an £80,000 house, it doesn't just happen the first time, sometimes it might do, but it's rare that that will get agreed on the first occasion, you're going to have a lot of no's and you've just got to be resilient. So you've got to try and agree it obviously at a lower price because any money you can get off that's money in your pocket straight away that's money that's going to go towards a future refinance out of the deal so if you in this example agreed it at sixty thousand pounds you're looking at deposit and fees of eighteen thousand pounds now it's higher because of course you've already bought your first home you're now looking at your second home which is a buy to let so you're going to have to put in a 25 percent deposit you're going to have to pay stamp duty at a higher rate and you might have fees for opening up that in a limited company as well. Refurb, again, you're early, you're, it's early days, it's a small house, do as much as you can yourself within reason, try and do it on a shoestring budget. Again, in this example, I've considered that you might have bought a house not needing too much, too much doing to it, and therefore look for a seven to 12,000 pounds refurb, depending how quickly you want to do this and move on to the next one, refinance, at a new value. Ideally, if you'd bought at this these sort of levels, you might be looking to new, you know revalue at uh, the sort of ninety thousand pound mark. Um, it's all subject to the area, the demand, and what what the valuation you get on it. Something around ninety thousand pounds, you might be achieving a rent of five fifty, which gives you a per annum rent of six thousand six hundred. And then after expenses, your profit and your cash flow per month should be around the three hundred pound mark. Uh, and earning you £3,600 per year. So that's an example how you can make this original £25,000 really work for you. Of course, property is never as easy as they tell you it's going to be on educational courses and on YouTube. So take this model, have a cash buffer for anything that might go wrong and just do your best. If you're stuck, and you want to buy a house for yourself, but you also want to start your buy-to-let portfolio, this could really be something for you. I'm personally going through the same situation where my partner and I, we bought a house, albeit a little while back now. We've been doing it up. We're hoping to make money on it and then use the profit to do another project. So it's definitely achievable, and this way you can hopefully get the best of both worlds. Um, hope you enjoyed that video. I certainly enjoyed making it and I enjoy helping people get themselves one step closer to their next property goal. If you've got any questions, drop me a message and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, I've been working like three jobs. Probably why I never see ya. Probably why I never have time for the fake friends. I won't be ya. Oh God, I've been running now.